Hello, my name is Nicole Fogarty and I'm a marine biologist. I grew up in Ohio, about as far away from the ocean as you can be, but I was lucky that my family trips would involve scuba diving on coral reefs. That's where I got my first experience with corals and the amazing animals that live on the reef. I wanted to do something to help save these beautiful communities that were so important to me as a child. So for my PhD in biology from Florida State University, I focused on two closely related species of branching corals, elkhorn corals and staghorn corals, and a hybrid of the two species. A hybrid is the offspring of two different species, like a mule being a hybrid of a horse and donkey. Hybrids are not very common in nature, especially in animals. But, in the case of the elkhorn and staghorn corals, the hybrid of the two species is pretty common and appears becoming more abundant, while both parental species are becoming more scarce. If you look at coral fossils, you don't see any evidence of the hybrid, and it has only been in the past 10 years that hybrid populations appear to be growing, while the parental species are declining. Understanding how these hybrid corals form may help save coral reefs and the animals that depend upon them. First, you need to know a little about the corals and how they reproduce. When the coral colony matures, it reproduces sexually by a process called spawning. Each colony releases egg and sperm bundles at the same time as other corals of the same species. A sperm and egg fuse to form a baby coral called a larva. The larva floats in the water for a few days until it's ready to swim to the bottom and settle on a hard surface. My research has discovered that the elkhorn and staghorn coral have only slightly different spawning times. That means that both species are releasing eggs and sperm at the same time, and it is possible that the hybrid could form. My research also showed that the elkhorn corals are pretty picky. They typically will not be fertilized by staghorn sperm. On the other hand, staghorn eggs are less picky and will get fertilized by an elkhorn sperm. Now, why are we suddenly seeing an increase in the hybrid population? Prior to the 1980s, the elkhorn and staghorn corals were very abundant, so it was easy for a coral to find a species match. But in the course of my lifetime, they have become endangered due to disease and warming sea conditions. As the distance between the same coral species increases, the opportunity for a hybrid to form became more likely because staghorn eggs are not immediately fertilized by their own species sperm. Because over 95% of the elkhorn and staghorn corals have died, they are not genetically diverse. The hybrid has a combination of the parental genes and has shown a greater ability to combat disease and tolerate changing water conditions. More research needs to be done on the genetic diversity of the hybrid. But what we do know is that the hybrid is growing in areas where the parents never grew before. These corals are very important to providing habitat to a variety of marine organisms, and the fact that they are growing as the sea warms provides some hope that we will have coral reefs in the future. I am very excited to continue my research on these corals in the hopes of ensuring their future and the future of young scientists like me who are inspired to become marine biologists after visiting the ocean. I hope this brief explanation of my research has shown you the challenges and importance of marine biology. For more information on my research, go to coastyflorida.org.